Welcome back to another episode of Titanium Man Garage and today we're working on a 2006 Polaris Ranger XP 700 fuel injected. As you can see he's got it all torn out. Engine's missing. All came in boxes. Sat for quite a while. So I've got the engine right here. Split both case halves apart already and I cleaned everything up. I just got it sitting there now, I gotta separate it again. I'm gonna put the crank and the counterbalancer in and I'll continue the process of showing you how to build a 700 engine. I ordered a new cam right away, new lifters and pistons. So there was nothing wrong with this crank, it just was sitting for a while. So I cleaned it up. Now before I install this, I'm going to put the new crank seal on. Got a little assembly lube. Uh, I just got to spray a little WD-40 on it. It's light on nice. It's actually kind of funny because when the guy took it apart, he thought he could just drill this out and it would just pop right out. But this one sits in the groove right there. So you I split the cases to get the crank seal out. I'll go ahead and slide that on. Bearings are good. Beautiful. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw some assembly lube in here right away. The sill in this bad boy fires off. Good. This is where the counterbalancer sets. I built quite a few 500 engines and I thought, wow, these are pretty easy. After I uh, built my first 700, I actually was, I thought it was a little easier than a 500. A little more to clean up, uh, you got to replace the lifters, but that's about all there is to it. So now when you install this, there's a little, I don't know what this is, like a C-clip around the bearing and then your seal and that's going to go in those grooves so you want to be careful when you install this. And I'll line up. Right spot. Very good. I'm going to put the counterbalancer in, make sure you put it with the key out on this side. And I'm gonna seal all this up and put the case together. <clears throat> Careful to try to keep it away from the counterbalancer and the crank bearings. And you also want to keep in mind, so this hole right here and then the one over here in the case, that is where your oil pump is and basically your oil pickup tube is cast into the block. So you want to make sure that's sealed up too. Thank you. 
wipe off any excess right away. Now to put the bolts in, I got a tray of bolts. So this is always the fun part because now I got to figure out what bolt goes where instead of I were to take it apart. And I do have another engine sitting over there to kind of go off of, so I know which bolts go where. All right, so I started two bolts and got it clamped, and I flipped the engine over. Make sure you put the Loctite on. Snugging them up, I'll torque them later. All right, so I got all the bolts in. Oh, there's a torque sequence, which I have to look up, but they are 22 foot-pounds, um, plus or minus two. All right, I got everything torqued down. And you can see I got my 600 engine sitting here. That's just for reference, because it's been a while since I've rebuilt one of these, so I have to put the cam in, the oil pump in, and I also have to put that plate around here that sits over there that holds the cam and the counterbalancer in place. All right, so I got my cam. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little uh, lube on there, and then I'm gonna install that. Put my plate. Very careful doing this. Plate that holds everything down. Right. Three beveled screws. I'm gonna go in the bevel here. Go ahead and put some Loctite on there too. I found out in the past that it's easier if you snug them all off with a wrench first. you get one tight and the rest of the plate won't move. I'm going to get these two gears lined up. There is a, a mark. And then I'm going to put the oil pump in because uh, I believe that gear just comes out. I remember right. And then I'll put this one on top. All right guys, so I got my plate in for the cam and the counterbalancer. I slid my gear on, I don't know if you can see right there. There are two marks for those gears, the crank gear and the counterbalancer gear. And you wanna line those up. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. Those two marks right there, here and here. Line those up. And next I'm going to clean this out and put the oil pump in. Now the oil pump is really nothing to it. There's a inner gear and outer gear when it spins. It just goes in there and it does slide out when you, if yours is out and push it back in. So I'm going to clean that surface, clean that up and then install that next. And that doesn't matter where, uh, where the gear goes. And when you put this gear in, make sure the cam is turned this way so the flat part is there, you can get the, the gear past the cam. So once I get the pump in, I'll put the gear in for the cam, tighten that down, and there's a mark here that that'll line up with also. Okay, so I'm gonna install the oil pump. So we got these gears. Now I don't want them to fall in the engine while I'm doing this. And also, this part goes up. I'm gonna line that up. I'm gonna slide that in there. I'll 
forget your Loctite. Definitely don't want your oil pump coming out. I'm just gonna hand start these. As soon as I find the hole. So now that I got the oil pump in, hand starting the the bolts. So I don't cross thread them. You don't want to put these in backwards. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. All right, so the oil pump has a little flange here, and inside the engine. Uh, on the top is a little port where it goes into the oil filter. So you want to make sure when you install this that this flange is going down and covering that hole. Okay, so when I took the cam out, the cam gear, it's a split gear and it's spring loaded. I don't know if you can see the springs in there. Comes in two parts like that. The guy had this disassembled. It's a pain in the ass to put together. Uh, I did have another one. So when you take them out, you want to put a bolt in there so they don't split because it'll turn a little bit. And now I'm trying to get those two dots to line up. And basically what I'm going to do is I got it almost on. I'm going to move this bolt. And I should push down. And then you want to use, you want to make sure not to get these two bolts mixed up. One has a flat washer and one has a curved washer. So that's curved. So when this is pushed down, that'll sit on there and it'll hold it in place. So I'm going to get that shimmied over, get it pressed down, bolt it down, and I'll just about have the whole bottom assembled. are lined up. These two marks are lined up. This one doesn't matter. I'm going to get my side cover put on. Get my stator put on. And then I'll do the top end. All right, there you go. I got everything assembled. Got these two timing marks lined up. And the counterbalancer to the cam. Counterbalancer to the crank. And this doesn't matter. Alright guys, so I put the cover on, which is pretty self-explanatory. I could only put three bolts in to hold the cover in place. And I put the stator in. And the reason there's only three bolts is because the rest of the bolts actually go into the cover and into the case at the same time. So first things first, you don't want to forget to put this on. Oops. Because you won't be able to Get on after you put the stator on. So this was sitting in a box, so I'm gonna have to clean this up. All right, give a little love tap. Lock tap. 
appetite is your friend. And uh, you torque that to, uh, I believe it's 45 foot pounds. I have a new gasket for the water pump cover. And I'm gonna put that on, and I can put my cover on. If you want to do a nice upgrade, they actually have billet ones like this, and they don't strip out. These are plastic. First. So I'm going to snug that up, so it's touching the mechanical water pump. That's black tight on there. Let's just give it a smidge more. You want just a little gap. It's not quite rubbing on there, but I got a little dirt in there, I'm gonna blow that out. And get my water pump cover put on. It's nice that they upgraded these to aluminum. The old ones were plastic. They'd warp and then they had a metal plate over it. You're gonna have to bear with me because I got a box of bolts. I gotta remember where each one goes. This would be great. Black plate on these. Two of them are longer ones. And those go into the case. I remember it's this one and that one. Notice how I'm hand starting all the bolts before I start tightening them down. That's because this thing will move and then your holes won't line up. I believe that is a 10 millimeter. Yep. Do this in a crisscross pattern. Slightly snug it down. Next comes my cover, but I'm going to clean this up first before I assemble it. This part should be self-explanatory. You just slap the cover on, put all the bolts in, and the bottom end's done. Right. So I got this all assembled. Like I said, you don't have to assemble that first. You can do the top end first if you please. Next, I'm going to put the brand new lifters in. And let me tell you, after building a couple of these engines, this is important. Uh, the old lifters will get soft and squishy. 
and then when you uh, go to rebuild your motor, you'll get a light tick, 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 tick noise. It's because your lifters and your um, and your rockers might be a little worn from the push rods. So I'm going ahead and installing brand new lifters. Now what I did was I poured some oil in here and poured it on the cam, cleaned this all up. That way this is all lubed up, so I can go ahead and install these. you're doing a rebuild, highly recommend new lifters. I've actually seen some of them where they're concaved on the bottom, they're worn from the cam. So I did replace the cam, I got a fresh cam, new lifters. And I'll put the base gasket on. And then I'll get the jugs ready and uh, what I do is I install the pistons in the jugs and then pull the jug over here and push the, the rods and the connecting rods. Alright, so we're going to install the piston. I've already got the base gasket on, I've got it on this side. Uh, I did lube the cylinders, so I'm going to go ahead and install that. The way you do that, this will save you time. That way you're not trying to compress two piston rings on the two pistons at the same time while you're installing this. You're going to want to do this, cover this up so you don't get these little, little clips in the engine. Alright, so now I just gotta clear this up. Get ready for my head gasket. All right, we want to torque these 35 plus or minus two, which will be the hard part, doing it out of the engine.
All right, so I got the motor dropped in. Uh, I apologize, my uh, card kicked out or my camera kicked out. Um, so basically all you do afterwards is you put the lift rods in, put the rockers on, and torque them down and put the cover on. Right now I'm going through the fuel injection system. I found out why the motor fried. One of the fuel injectors plugged. As you can see, I got the whole system here. I, I was able to clean it up and get it to squirt out, but I'm assuming that's why the one piston seized up because there was no fuel getting in there, it was running dry. I bought two new fuel injectors and the wires to go with it. And those just plug out, there's a rubber seal on here and on here. Just gonna pop that out, push the new one in, and bolt it down onto the top of here. All right guys, I'm gonna issue with this thing starting. So I guess you can't win them all. I thought it'd be a quick, easy rebuild. Throw this bad boy back together. It turns out I've got other issues. So stay tuned for part two. When I go through the fuel injection, hit the thumbs up if you like the video, and like always, till next time.